Hey guys, King Gath here and welcome to Bethesda Mod School. In this lesson, I'm going to go over the very basics of dialogue. And to do that, we're going to set up a custom NPC. I'm going to voice it myself and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to set up just a custom NPC that just speaks one line over and over again every time you walk up and talk to them. Now, we'll get way deeper in future episodes of this. And the reason I've broken this off into its own series is because dialogue is such a deep and complicated topic and it doesn't always have to do with questions. So we could have put it in the creation kit series, but I think some people uh, will just be here for this. And like I said, it's deep enough itself that it could go on for many, many episodes. So for this initial one, I'm going to start by showing you guys this thing called voice types. Now, voice types in a in the basic sense of things are just a way to separate out the sound files into their own folder which i like to do i like to give every unique character their own voice type record it keeps it nice and clean it's also something you can condition off of which is very very useful and I, we've talked about conditions in some of my other videos but if you're just coming into this uh, skipping up some of the other stuff you might want to go through some of the quest and creation kit stuff as well because those will also be relevant often i'll probably be assuming you have a little bit of that knowledge though i'll try to cover this in a way that anybody could just pick this up so mm -hmm. a Effectively, a voice type is just a folder for, for voices so that all the files end up in the same spot. And you'll find that with Bethesda, a lot of times they'll use one voice type for multiple NPCs. So for something like they've got the BOS female and BOS male, obviously there are dozens of different faces for the Brotherhood of Steel characters, but they only share a couple of different voice types. And so the voice type is, is kind of a way to organize all of the voice files by a particular actor in the real world. And so we're going to set something like that up now. So we're going to go ahead and set up a new and we'll do, like always, we'll prefix our new editor IDs with something. So for this series, I'll do KG Diag. And then we'll just call this, and I like to put uh, VT in there for voice type, mostly because what will end up happening is I'll end up naming this voice type exactly the same as the NPC record I'm going to change or I'm going to create. And so I will need some way to distinguish this editor ID because every thing you create in the creation kit does need to have its own unique ID. So we'll call this underscore VT underscore, and I'm going to name the character after myself and we'll go with Gath and we'll just go ahead and hit uh, okay here. Now, uh, just a quick thing on these, on these little boxes. There are a, there is a gender drop down. I don't know exactly what that would be used for generally because you, for the most part, you're assigning a voice type to each of the NPCs, but, but perhaps there are some, some in some places where this ends up being used for automation because the dialogue system in this game is very, very complex and it can dynamically set up lines and assign them to NPCs. And so one of the things we'll be covering in this series is how to protect your dialogue and NPCs so that they only are spoken by the actual characters you want because it can be very easy to accidentally create dialogue that covers all the NPCs in the game and then you effectively have broken the dialogue system for the whole game so you have to be careful with that but uh, this will help with creating voice types and then allow default dialogue I believe that checking that in is just a way to allow some of the vanilla dialogue that is more generic to affect them I tend to just always leave it blank. I don't have an example of when this is used or how this is used. This very well could be a carryover from older games. But in general, all I will do when I create a voice type is give it an ID and choose either male or female, and that's it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Next, we're going to create ourselves a custom actor. Now, rather than doing this from scratch, I'm going to just take Abbott here and duplicate him. And I'm going to duplicate him by opening his record and just replacing his ID. And then when we hit OK, it'll ask us if we want to create a new record. So we'll go KG Diag and we'll just go with Gath. And then we'll just name him Gath. Oops. And now I don't want to go too deep into all this. I have covered some of this in another tutorial about what some of these things do, but mostly what I'm going to do is show you some of the things you got to watch out for when you're duplicating an NPC, because this will be a common thing you'll do to save time is pick an NPC that's similar already in maybe gear or whatever to what you want to create so that you don't have to go set up a lot of stuff manually. And there are a few things you'll, you'll want to be aware of. So first thing are these checkboxes right here. So in general, I tend to, if I'm creating an NPC, I only want to show up once, I will check in unique. The uh, other two I often use are essential and protected. So essential would be we don't want anyone to be able to kill this NPC. And protected means only the player can kill them. So if it's an NPC that's important to your quest, if you're creating a follower mod, you'll probably want to make them essential. If it's just a random NPC out in the world, you probably don't want anything. And then if it's a you know something like a settler where you generally don't want them to die accidentally in combat, but you're if you want to get but if you're okay with the player just killing them because they're just really pissed off that day, then protected is the best way to go with that. 
Some of these other ones get rarely used. They're very, very particular, so I'm not even gonna go over these. You generally will never use all of these over here. You also likely won't use this diffuse alpha test, where you will probably use occasionally are going to be a dozen effect stealth meter. You might use that if you wanna create, say, a follower mod and you don't want them breaking stealth for the player for some reason, especially if they're a type of NPC that normally would break stealth, so you might end up using that. But otherwise, most of that stuff's not gonna be used. Now, in the other tutorial, I've talked about one of the common scripts to add here is the workshop NPC script we're not going to do that right yet but we could all of this stuff here generally is going to be stuff you're going to be better off setting up in the game and using a program called face ripper which i will make a tutorial for in the future on how to use that to set up a lot of this stuff such as the weight and these uh, body morph values and things like that but the one thing you will commonly use on this screen well a couple of things you'll use commonly here are first there's the male female checkbox so if you need to convert somebody to the female animation set you would check that in you could also change the race here. So if you didn't want to create a human, if you were creating something else, you would choose it here. Skin tends to be something like for the humans, there are there's a dirty skin and a, uh, let's see if I can find them. There are dirty and uh, clean skins available. So if we go down, I think let's just start with skin. Let's see, skin, where are we at? So this is where you would set up, uh, you could set up like different uh, feral ghoul skins. And the best way to figure out how to use these is to look at existing records of things you wanna copy. I'm not super familiar with this skin system, but I have, the only time I've ever seen it generally used is uh, there's a way to set the uh, skin for an older body so that they're a little more wrinkly and things like that. But I'm gonna just leave it, oops, I'm gonna leave it on none. Uh, but this is something, you, again, look at other records, you'll see if you wanna copy how they're doing it, but skin is how you do that. So that they're the same race, they're using the same general race, but maybe they're just a slightly altered version, and that's where skin handles that. Um, height, you generally you generally wanna leave this alone with any NPCs, especially humanoids, because if they are of a different height than the default, when they go to use furniture, they will go back down to the normal average height. That's why all NPCs are approximately the same height in the game is because generally if you change the height, you have to change the animations to match and the system baked into the game is not good at that. And so it, uh, it instead they just rely on the trick of making everybody the same height. So uh, the actual thing we're gonna change here though is just the voice type. So we're gonna go ahead and use our keyboard to jump to the one we want. So KG Diag VT Gath. And now our copy of the NPC will be using the voice from our uh, separate folder that we created this KG Diag VT Gath for under the voice type records. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay here and then we're gonna open the record back up because there's a couple of more things you'll wanna watch out for, especially when you're setting up a copy of an NPC. So a lot of dialogue in the base game is actually controlled by which factions the NPCs are in. So what I tend to do is remove my custom NPCs from any factions, and then I will add them back in as necessary. And usually it will be things like I'll wanna, I might add like the player friend faction, or I might add in, uh, if they're supposed to be a member of Diamond City, I might add in that, but just add in the factions for the, for the NPCs that they tend to be around so that they will naturally be friendly with them. And so that, when, and more than being friendly, Factions generally have more to do with whether or not they will join into a fight. So that tends to be how you decide that. I have covered factions in another video in the Creation Kit series. So if you want to learn more about that there. But generally, if you're making a copy of an NPC, you probably want to remove whatever factions they had by default. Um, we're also going to change the assigned crime faction because that can also have an impact. And again, check out the factions video if you want to know more. Uh, the other thing we're going to mess with here is the keywords. So there's commonly two keywords or or none you will find on NPCs. There are a few others, but these two are the most common. And these are the anim archetype and the anim face archetype. And these change kind of the flavor of the animations. So if you think about some of the characters that are default in Sanctuary, when you go to Preston and rescue him, you'll, you can think about people like Marcy, who she just always seems a little bit pissed off. She's crossing her arms a lot, things like that. Those are controlled by these anim archetypes. So we're going to go ahead and delete these and we're just going to leave our character neutral. But if you want to add more of them uh, or if you want to search for specific types, if you go anim star arc, you'll find all of them. You can have one for the face and one for the body language and they will uh, change the animation slightly based on that. So something like Mama Murphy would have elderly. So they've got a little hunch to their position. Depressed would be something like June Long, irritated like Marcy. And uh, you can experiment with all these and see how they change things. And then the, uh, the face archetype also has a big impact because because it kind of sets their resting face. So if you want somebody to seem uh, happy-go-lucky, you can give them the friendly face. If you want them to just seem like a just 
well put together, smart person you could follow, maybe confident, and to try out different ones of these to see kind of what they do in game. It's definitely worth testing just so you can learn this because the other place you end up using, and especially anim face archetype, you'll end up using these a lot when we start getting into dialogue deeper. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna just leave this default. So actually, you know, what? I'll go ahead and put some on just so you guys can see kind of how it changes. Hopefully you'll you'll have enough experience with the game. You'll know how things look. So we'll put ourselves as, uh, we'll do friendly for the body language. And we'll do for the face. Um, let's do let's do conspiratorial because I just want to see what that looks like. Because uh, I actually am not sure how that looks, but uh, we'll leave that for those. Uh, and then the last tabs to change that you're generally going to mess with are going to be these AI and the inventory. So an AI. I, it tends to be that you'll find a lot of vanilla NPCs are unaggressive. I like aggressive as the setting, which means that the NPC will actually defend themselves. Whereas unaggressive, often you can just kind of beat them down without them uh, fighting back. Uh, average confidence is usually good. Helps allies is generally a good thing to have on. So that way, whenever you do set up their factions, they'll actually, again, join in those fights. And then combat style, default is probably fine. Uh, and then we'll go to AI packages. I like to just remove all of these and then either do one of two things here, either just add a default sandbox package or under default package list, choose one of the default master packages. So uh, I think it's default master package list. This is a good one to go with. But uh, in this case, I don't want the NPC wandering around because I'm just trying to show you guys some stuff. So I'm gonna leave it with no AI packages, which means he's basically going to do nothing. But again, if you want to learn about the different types, just think about an NPC that you like the way they act in the game by default and look at their AI packages. Now, I'm going to do probably a whole series just on AI packages because, again, it's a very deep topic and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. But uh, for, for now, I would say the recommendation would be just copy an NPC you like the package of and you should be in good shape. Um, and then if we go to inventory, I'm, I'm fine with leaving this, but I'm going to remove this special key. Generally, when you set up uh, a new NPC, you'll want to set up an outfit record, and then you'll want to make sure that they at least have a weapon. And for the most part, you'll find that every NPC has one of these LLE records. Either they will have one of the uh, citizen records, or they will have one of the raider records. And basically, it's a matter of adding things like some caps and you know some random scrap or some food, things like that, just so that they it seems like they have some stuff in their pockets if they happen to die, as opposed to just being completely... Uh, empty of anything. It's also, I think, uh, as a way to make pickpocketing more interesting as long as you're making sure every NPC has something on their inventory. So that tends to be all you'll want to set up on a new NPC. If you're making a copy, you're probably going to want to go go mess with some things. And I'll cover a lot more of this in depth, especially this inventory screen and the AI screens in uh, further tutorials. But like I said, if you want to know about factions and AI for that matter, the AI data, I cover these in extreme detail in some of the creation kit tutorials. So we'll go ahead and hit OK there. And uh, now we're going to save our plugin because uh, we haven't done that in a while and we need to remember to do that. So we'll do, uh, as you can see, I already started one off camera to make sure I knew what I was going to do. But we'll do, uh, we'll do dialogue basics, we'll call this. There we go. Okay, so then the last thing we need to get a NPC talking is a quest. Now you can actually end up with multiple quests involved with this. And if you followed my quest series, you'll know that I talked about at the beginning of it in the very first episode of that, that the the idea of a quest is a little misleading and generally all quests are in the creation kit are just kind of management objects they can do all sorts of things and one of the things they handle is dialogue so they don't when you say quest it doesn't necessarily mean a a pop-up on your screen that names it and gives you objectives a quest can, is literally in the creation kit is just a way to control various parts of the game so we're going to go ahead and name this uh, kg diag i like to name my quests like this I will put them with uh, in this type of quest so there are I guess I need to talk a little bit more about this so there are two general not eh, three actually three general types of uh, dialogue controllers I, I tend to create in the creation kit and there's probably more I'm not thinking of or that I haven't got to yet in my creation but the first one is the basic dialogue type quest and this will handle things like the NPC saying hello or sometimes you'll find NPCs just randomly they'll walk by you and they won't talk to you but they'll say something into the air uh, so my favorite one to always quote quote is, uh, I can't remember the last time I had fin clean fingernails, those type of uh, idols or like the combat yells where they scream things before they run in and attack, stuff like that. That is what I would call generic dialogue and that tends to go in this dialogue type quest. Then there are the random event dialogue and that's where the t or two random NPCs will start having a little conversation with each other. That's another type. And then the third type would be, con would be at quest in the traditional sense, 
quest based dialogue where there's some sort of scripted out sequence where they say a lot of things. Maybe the player talks back with them and then some sort of quest objectives happen. Those are more quest dialogue and that is yet another type and often is involved with a lot more than just dialogue itself in that particular quest record. But for this case, for this basics, I'm just going to set up what I call the, the basic dialogue or we sometimes on the Sim Settlements team, we call it the independent dialogue quest. And this is the stuff that's not related to anything in particular. It was just the NPCs kind of background stuff. It just kind of fills in their flavor and make sure that they feel like a believable character in the game. So for this basic type, for this for this basic dialogue, I tend to put a priority of 30. The priority with dialogue is used if there are multiple eligible lines for a character to speak, it's going to choose the one with the highest priority on its quest. So this can be a creative way you can set up things. So you can set up certain other multiple dialogue quests and that are have higher priorities under certain conditions. So maybe for example, you want a character like Travis in the, the vanilla game. So spoiler alert, uh, at some point you get a chance to uh, change the personality of the radio DJ in Fallout 4. And one of the ways you could do this, I don't know that Bethesda does this, but you could set up a second dialogue quest for him where his priority was slightly higher and have it conditioned in this section here, quest dialogue conditions, conditioned so that it only was it only took place after a certain quest was completed. That could be your condition, and that, that would be one way to do that. So that might be the way they do it. I've never looked. But uh, that is uh, the priority. I tend to keep it pretty low for this basic dialogue, and that way I have a lot of room to play with above because you can go all the way up to 100 with priority if I want to inject other dialogue. For example... When we get into things like quest dialogue or those random event dialogue, we want to make sure that those are a higher priority than our basic dialogue because those are special events that we want to happen. Um, so that's that's what I would set up on this first screen. I would leave start game enabled and run once. Generally, you just your dialogue quest is just going to run. It's going to sit there in the background. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just used to calculate what that NPC should say at any given time. Um, the last thing I like to do, and this is something I haven't seen a lot of others do, but I like to set a dialogue condition to make sure that nobody else can accidentally get my dialogue. Because this is a common problem you'll run into as you start learning with dialogue and you start experimenting. Eventually, you're going to come to a point where you add some dialogue and then every person in the game is going to start speaking that line and you're going to be wondering why. And generally, it's because you didn't condition your dialogue correctly. So what I like to do on my dialogue quest, on my basic dialogue quest, is add a new condition, and I choose get is voice type, and then I'll choose that new voice type we set up. And what this will do is it'll make sure that the only way an NPC can use any of the dialogue we define in this quest is if they have this voice type set up. And presumably, since you created it in your mod, none of the vanilla NPCs and no NPCs from other mods will ever have this voice type. So worst case scenario when you do this is multiple of your own NPCs in this exact mod will end up with these lines. And then that's a much smaller issue to troubleshoot and much less likely you're going to break other people's mods. So that's how I like to do it. There are a million other ways to do this. Some people like to do uh, to condition on an alias so they'll set up their character on an alias but we and we will do that in the future but for now I'm trying to minimize the number of steps for this first tutorial so we're gonna go ahead and hit okay and we're gonna end up going right back into this quest this is something you'll commonly find when you're setting up quest records as you have to hit okay to save them so, and then when you open them again there's more information available so let's go ahead and open this back up by searching for our prefix and you'll notice at the top now there are way more tabs up here so this is a common thing that will happen when you're setting up any type of quest. So the thing we're interested in here are a few of these sections up here. So up at the top, the beginning stuff are the things you would expect to handle things like a quest where you see in the game where the player is given objectives and told to do things. And that's the sections, the quest stages, quest objectives, and often quest aliases. That tends to be all regarding that. Then there's player dialogue, and this is actually misleading. This often has to do with player dialogue, but it can actually also be used to force the NPC to speak things. So if you've ever seen things like the companions where they randomly bark stuff out in the world as in response to you doing things, this is actually often set up on the player dialogue tab, and we'll cover that in a future tutorial. Uh, command dialogue I have never used. I don't know if it's actually used in Fallout 4 or if it is. It's just in a, I haven't found it uh, in a example that I could follow along. Scenes tend to be the specific scenes where something is going to play out. So, for example, a scene could be uh, a barter scene where it's the NPC asks, you know, hey, how you doing? You need anything? And then the player responds and then the NPC responds to that. That tends to be what a scene is. It's one thing happening than another. They often involve multiple characters, but they don't always have to. But we're not going to be using scenes yet. That's a very complicated stuff. Scenes are immensely complicated, immensely powerful and very, very cool. I love scenes, but I'm not ready to show those to you guys yet. But those will definitely be covered in this dialogue series scene collections I am not I haven't fully 
wrapped my head around what these are for. I believe they're just an organizational tool when you get a very complicated set of scenes up. And I think that's what they're there for, but I haven't used them effectively yet. But what we're interested in for this tutorial, and we're not even gonna do all of them, but just to show you guys are these sections, combat, favors, detection, service, and miscellaneous. And what those actually are, are different types of dialogue. So I'm gonna pop into a random one just to give you an idea. Um, but effectively, they all, all these screens look identical. You can see they all have the same exact layout. What's different is the types of dialogue topics that are available on each. So generally on this screen, the way it works is you come into this middle box and you right click and hit new topic. And then you choose one of these topics. And these topics tend to deal with a particular instance in the game, something's happening, some event that will trigger the dialogue you set up in this section to to happen. So for example, uh, one of my favorite ones to set up in the combat type is taunt. So this is the NPCs kind of yelling at their opponents trying to get them to come attack. And so depending on what you choose here, it will determine when the lines you define for that topic are actually used. And so to make it easier, rather than just dumping the, the I think there's almost, I think there's about 100 different types of uh, dialogue topic based in the game, rather than dumping them all in one tab, they broke them up. So things that are combat related are here. Favors are things like the, whether when you issue people commands, so you know when you issue your followers commands, or if you issue workshop NPCs commands in uh, settlements, things like that. Uh, detection, this is generally only used by NPCs to when they're dealing with you stealthing around. So this tends to be something you'll find that it's more configured for enemy NPCs, like the Raiders have just boatloads of detection dialogue, whereas the settler NPCs don't need much because generally you as the player aren't gonna be sneaking up trying to kill them. So this is one of those ones that uh, you'll learn over time Certain types of dialogue aren't worth going all in on depending on how the NPC is going to be used. So this is all tends to be stuff regarding to stealth gameplay. Service, I believe, is similar to the uh, favors. Yeah, so this is going to be things like after uh, players exit the barter. I tend to actually set this up, st a lot of this stuff up in a different way. I think a lot of this part, the service, was more used for Skyrim, actually. Like travel, I think, was in regards to if you, you activated one of the wagon guys to travel somewhere. The uh, service and training were when you were actually training up with NPCs. So I think a lot of this stuff is mostly obsolete. I haven't seen a lot of it set up in Fallout 4, though there are some examples. The, ta the tab I tend to use most, or the two tabs I tend to use most, are miscellaneous and combat, though. And so today we're going to go over a couple of the miscellaneous types. So if we go to new topic, uh, there are a few here I want to talk about. There's a lot here. You'll learn about all of them as we go. I might not necessarily cover every single one, but I might go through a walkthrough and tell you what each of them do in some other future video. But for now, we're going to focus on three types, and then we're going to set up just two of them. So we're going to first talk about greeting and hello, and then we'll talk about idle. So greeting and hello are very similar, and they're basically the NPC speaking something in response to being activated. Now the difference between a hello and a greeting is often a greeting will lead into a scene, whereas a hello tends to be just spoken once and that's it. The other thing with greetings is greetings can actually happen from the NPC first. So without the player actually initiating any dialogue, the greeting can be triggered. So the NPC can approach you. So again, for talking Skyrim examples, if you think about those messengers that would come in and say, hey, I've got a message for you. Uh, then they would come running up to you. And that's a, a called a force greeting, which we'll cover in a future video. But greeting it tends to be a basically a hello that is going to lead into something, whereas a hello is just kind of a friendly, you know, hey, how's it going? That type of thing. So we're going to set up some hellos today. Actually, we're going to just set up one just to keep it real basic and simple. And, um, and then I want to talk about idle really quick. So idle is very similar to a hello, but you don't necessarily have to activate the NPC or talk to them directly. It's just when you get near them. So idols, I often reference this one is from the settlers, which is, I can't remember the last time I had clean fingernails. That is something they'll just speak kind of as you're, you're getting near them, you're within earshot, and it's just lines of the NPC just kind of just kind of BSing. Maybe they're talking to people around them or they're talking it to you know, whoever cares. Maybe you can say they're talking to the player, but it tends to be just stuff that's not direct. It's generally just them talking for the sake of talking. It's it's good stuff to have. A little dialogue really makes these characters come to life. And uh, I love adding that, but in this for this particular example, we're gonna stick with the hello. So once you've added whatever topics you want, you can click on any one and then this right-hand section will light up. Then if you right click over here and hit new, you'll get an empty box and sometimes it actually opens up on its own. I don't know why I did it there. I don't know what the criteria is to make them open directly to this screen. But if we double click that, we get this new response screen. And here we can type in any words we want. 
And generally, you'll be typing in the dialogue that's being spoken by the voice actor. Now, there are two ways to get voice files here. And we're going to use the simple way, but it's not a clean way. And we'll go over the clean way in another tutorial, probably the next one, because I think there are some other things tied to it that you'll want right away when you start playing with dialogue. So generally, you would just say what the NPC is going to say. And this is used for the subtitles. So we'll just go, uh, hey, guys, King Gath here. And this is going to sound real awkward in game because my my inflection for doing it works great in a YouTube video, not so much in a character, but whatever. Um, so then you're going to get spell checking as soon as you click off of that. If you find you use a word a lot, like for whatever reason, Bethesda does not have most typical curse words in their dictionary. So even though their characters say f bombs and all sorts of stuff all the time, you have to you're going to constantly get spell check errors on them. So I find I'll, I'll tend to just add those to my dictionary so that I don't get prompted by them constantly. So then over here, so there's a lot of junk on here. This is a very intimidating screen, but I'm going to try and make it a lot less scary for you. So generally, you'll only use this box here and then the face archetype. So you want to choose, you know, how they're talking. So we'll say friendly. And then you will select this little box here and click record. And then you can talk right into the microphone and speak the line. And this is a great way to quickly get things demonstrated and set up. Now, there, another way to do it is robo voice. But for whatever reason, Bethesda did not include a robo voice file generator in with the creation kit. Now, there are versions of this floating around the, uh, etho, uh, the ether, but I don't know where they came from. So I would not include one with the toolkit. If I can find one that I know is not uh, pirated from some Bethesda employee or something and I know it's safe to use, I will include one. But for now, uh, just know that RoboVoice doesn't actually do anything by default in the creation kit. So generally, you'll select this right here. And you'll notice that the voice type matches the voice type we set up for the character. Now, if for some reason you had skipped any of those steps, you might find a whole bunch of stuff listed here. You might find pretty much all of Bethesda's default voices listed here. And if you see that, what you'll want to do is instead of recording any voice, just hit OK. And then you'll get this topic info screen. Hit OK again. Hit OK one more time on the dialogue, save, and then go back through and make sure you have all your things configured. Make sure you have the voice type set up on your quest if that's how you're going to condition it or on your NPC. Just make sure that uh, you don't have it set up without any conditions because that's what makes that happen. Um, so we'll go back to our Miss tab and we'll double click our dialogue one more time. Now you'll notice that this is a different screen than the first time we double clicked it. And there's two screens here. One is the response screen. This is the actual uh, content of the dialogue and how the face works. It tells us the file name, things like that. And then there's this topic info, which has some other things, which we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, for the sake of making this quick, we're going to just record into our uh, right into the creation kit here. So we can click on that, click on record. Hey, guys, King Gath here. And then we can play it back. Hey, guys, King Gath here. And we can save it once we're satisfied with it. Now, I would I would suggest you never, ever use anything you record like this directly in the game for release. But this is fantastic for quickly prototyping. And one of the reasons for that is that you'll find that the click of your mouse to hit stop actually gets caught in the recording. So it's uh, it's always going to just sound a little bit irritating. And, the, uh, and you're going to want to clean up your voice files anyway, which we'll cover in a tutorial as well. I'll show you guys some real basics for audio editing, something that some, I'll show you some steps that anybody can do to make their audio sound way, way better. Compliments of some of our audio team on some settlements who have showed me the ropes. But uh, this is an awesome way to prototype. And one of the reasons you want to do this is that if you don't have a sound file associated with your dialogue, when you're testing, you have to wait like 10 or 15 seconds before the dialogue subtitles disappear, before the NPC will say anything. For whatever reason, by default, the game will just keep that up for a long time and prevents the NPC from speaking further. And I'm sure that's partially just to make sure that uh, dialogue where uh, someone forgot to, to put a voice file in can still be tested, because otherwise it would just be assumed it would be a zero second sound file and then it would just skip right over that dialogue. So by default, the the timer that Bethesda puts in for dialogue is obnoxiously long. And I think it's based on the length of the response text. The longer it is, the, the more time it waits before you can respond. But if you have a voice file in there, some sort of sound file, it lasts exactly as long as that voice file. 
So that's pretty much all we have to set up in here is you're basically using, you set up your response text, you choose what type of face you want them to have while they're speaking it, and then you can record. And if you're gonna do all of your audio stuff externally, you don't even need to do the record step, though you might need this voice file name here. But we're gonna cover that stuff in a future tutorial because there's actually a really cool export utility in here to get all of this type of information out of the creation kit so that you can make use of it elsewhere. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay here. And now we're on this topic info screen. Now, in this case, we're not gonna do anything here. We're actually done. We could just get okay, hit okay and head in game and uh, spawn our NPC and start talking to him and he would say this. But I wanna talk about a couple of extra things here that I think some of you might wanna play with while you're waiting for me to do more tutorials on this particular series. And the biggest one, uh, one or the biggest two I would say are random. So you can do, if you check in random on all of them that you define here, you'll it'll randomize between all of those. The random end would mean once they got to that one, they would stop randomizing. Now, that is a thing I don't fully comprehend a good way to use that because to me that seems like that would just break the randomness a lot. So I don't know exactly what that's for, but you'll see that some of Bethesda stuff is set up that way. I also think they tend to use it more with groups, which again, as in a more advanced topic we'll be talking about, you can group up batches of dialogue and then condition them, which is very useful, but too much for right now. Um, and then another one is requires player activation. So if you don't want the NPC to speak a particular line, unless you walk up to them and press them, um, you can check in this requires player activation, but we're okay with this. This is the very basics, like I said, so we've got that set up. So now the last thing we need to do is get our NPC somewhere in the game so we can actually talk to them. Um, now this is something that's gonna veer a little bit from the dialogue topic and into something else, but I wanna show a common issue that will come up for people when they start trying to set up NPCs in the game world. So we're gonna go to uh, Sanctuary just because that's I've got a save file that's set up right in Sanctuary and that'll just make this a lot easier. Oh, we need to go back to Commonwealth. And there's a thing with NPCs called persistence. And if you don't set it up correctly, then often you'll find when you go into your game to test, your NPC might not be there or they might not be configured correctly with their dialogue, especially when we get into the alias phase, which is gonna be something for a more advanced topic. But if you've been following my quest series, you can imagine, or you've probably already seen stuff with aliases and uh, the persistence on an NPC is important when it comes to that stuff. So uh, once we get, once the cell loads, I'll show you how to confirm that your persistence is set up correctly. Most of the time, it's gonna happen automatically. It's not something you have to worry about, but you, just, you have to worry about it at least in as much to make sure that it's there. So let's go ahead and we'll just put our NPC right in here. Cause I think I actually, the save file I have, I'm, my character's standing right in front of the workbench here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, first up, I'm gonna do something I showed in the quest tutorial that I recommend you guys do. If you're gonna be messing with vanilla locations, what I would do is set up a new layer. So we'll go uh, KG Diag, uh, let's see, we'll go uh, placement layer. And this will appear in this list here. And then we're gonna check in active. And then we're gonna right click on this and hit freeze all other layers. So that way I don't accidentally move anything else around. See, I can't even select it uh, when I'm positioning my NPC. So now we're gonna drag him in. I can move him around. And I don't have to worry about accidentally clicking something else. Because if you click anything else in the vanilla game world, you introduce an edit. And oftentimes if you edit something, especially things that are generally statics, so things like you know these blocks of cement things, the things that you couldn't scrap, for example, in a, in a workshop, those are part of what are called the pre-combines. Well, anytime you move an item that's part of the pre-combines, all of the pre-combined for that area are now considered broken and this frame rate will tank for players in that area. So one way to prevent that is to create yourself custom layers and freeze everything else when you're working so you don't accidentally break the pre-combines. All right, so now our NPC is in there. So now we're gonna check out this persistence thing. So what you'll do to check your persistence is you'll double click your NPC and you're gonna, by default, you'll be on this 3D data tab. But actually, I think anytime you uh, open up an NPC, it brings up whatever the last tab any NPC you clicked on was on. So I think I had previously been on the persist location when I was setting up the demo, the, uh, the demo plugin to make sure I knew exactly what I wanted to do for this uh, tutorial. So you'll see the persistence location is set up here. It's got Sanctuary Hills location, which is perfect. And that's what's gonna happen 99% of the time when you place an NPC, because you'll probably be placing them in areas where there are NPCs already, so Bethesda will have already solved this. But sometimes you'll find an area that's not used, and you will find that instead you have none as your persist location. When this happens, that tends to mean that you put them in what are the, called the wilderness cells. So there's a lot of cells in the game. Uh, there are thousands, and only the ones that have a lot of high interest things are actually set up per, with a location record. 
And so when you find this happens, what I tend to find, I have to do one of two things. Either one is I just pick a random location that's and just make it their persist location and, and hope that that works. And sometimes it does. Or I will put my NPCs in a separate cell I create, give it a custom location record, put them there, and then move them here with a script. Obviously, that's very advanced for this stage. So generally, what I would just recommend you do is... I would start by, while you're learning, put your NPCs in areas that they get a persist location na naturally. And if they're not getting one there, you're probably too far out in the woods and you probably need to rethink that because it's likely that you're going to have some problems down the road. Uh, this is something we'll cover in a future tutorial. I just wanted you guys to be aware so that you're not getting frustrated while dealing with dialogue stuff. So to avoid that frustration and this advanced knowledge requirement, just make sure you got a persist location. And if you didn't, you're probably going to want to choose somewhere a little more populated before you put your NPC. Or you can test just picking a random location and see if that fixes your issue so there we go so now we're ready to hop in game and our npcs should say hey guys can gath here over and over again whenever we talk to them okay we are in the game here's our uh, gath character we walk up hey guys, can gath here. and you can see it makes a little kind of animation the the subtitles work you can hear my voice but there are a couple of problems here first we have no <coughs> lip sync hey guys can gath here and if you base it if you talk about it versus the cough my character just did or let me go talk to codsworth to give you a better example you know that that dialogue hey, is incredibly Codsworth. quiet so there's my character talking and codsworth hey let me go let go <laughs> the old camera pull uh and then Excuse if you hear me. this hey guys can gath here. it's considerably quieter and for some of you you'll find that it's much louder some of you will be even quieter than mine i don't know what the settings are or how the creation kit determines how loud it's going to be but that is a common problem that i find and one more reason not to use the creation kit for final production stuff that you're going to release um, i also want you to notice that time that it just happened i didn't actually push the talk button i'm not pushing anything i have my controller set down but that is one of the reasons where where you might want f uh, under the player activation checkbox that we that i showed you is that you might want that because what will happen is if you stand in front of an npc for long enough they'll say one of their random hello lines so there are a couple of problems with the way we've done this obviously the other one i, I don't know if i talked about it but there's no lip sync which looks very awkward but we'll cover all of that stuff in future ones but now you should have at least a basic grasp of the the voice type of the new npc and setting their voice type record and then the basic dialogue quest which will get a lot of you guys started and then i will once again say head to 74494's channel he's got a lot of basics covered on dialogue as well and that'll should tide you over till i catch up to all of the stuff he's covered and cover that and a lot lot more.